In this episode of Mind Pump, we talk all about the surprising benefits of resistance training and weight training. Now, you probably already know that if you start lifting weights, you're going to build muscle, you're going to burn more body fat, you're going to look more sculpted, you'll be able to move better, build more strength. But a lot of you may not know that there are other huge, massive, glaring benefits that you can get that have nothing to do with building muscle, getting stronger, and burning body fat. So we cover those. We actually cover five of them. We talk about the effects on your brain and your ability to think, the effects on your libido, uh, your healthy sex drive. We talk about your mood and how resistance training affects your mood and the studies that support that. We talk about how it impacts your ability to fight off illness. And then we talk about the empowering effects of resistance training. Also, I want to let you know that there's only two days left. That's it, 48 hours for our huge MAPS HIT 50% off sale. Now, MAPS HIT is our high-intensity interval training program. So this is a workout based off of uh, high-intensity interval training concepts and techniques that are designed to help you burn body fat in short periods of time. These workouts are anywhere between 15 to 25 or maybe 30 minutes long. You're doing cycles of exercises with barbells and dumbbells. The program comes with uh, video demos so you know exactly what you're doing. There are sessions in there designed to help improve mobility and prevent injury as well. It's a very complete program. Again, it's half off. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapshit.com. That's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com and use the code HIT50 for the discount. That's H-I-I-T-5-0. Remember, you have 48 hours as of the day of the dropping of this episode. So, you know, I was thinking about something the other day. Um, I was thinking about when I would train clients in the early days and, you know, obviously as a personal trainer, especially when you first start, you think your job is I'm going to get this person to lose fat. I'm going to get them to build muscle and look better and, you know, get them fit. Right. And that is a large part of what you do as a trainer, but always, especially when I first became a trainer, I would always get blown away by the, the other types of benefits that I would observe on my clients, that they would observe themselves. From what, strength training? From strength training. Right. Like, you know, you expect them to say things like, oh, my arms look more defined right. I'm or stronger. I'm stronger. Yeah. Yeah. But they would come to me oftentimes and they would say things that I didn't start to put together until I heard it a lot. Like, is it normal for me to be more horny? Yeah, that's that's a great <laughs> I get that example. All the time, though. That's well, a great example. You know, where you're going with this, I really like because. It also reminds me of the evolution of my coaching. Like so, when I first started training, you you speak to the scale, you speak to the body fat percentage, you speak to the way they look mm -hmm. almost always. Like that's all you as a that's a, everything as a new trainer every because that yeah. and, well and, that's what they're coming in for too. right exactly to the defense of the, the the young trainer or early years is that it's you know your client comes in and they say hey I I want this and mm -hmm. that's and so okay so you continue to speak to that. But it wasn't until years later, probably a decade later, that I actually start to like almost okay it. Like, okay, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll definitely lose that weight. Yeah, we'll do this. But then as we would, after you had signed with me for, you know, months ahead, I know I had you, the conversation would quickly change to all the other things. And the reason why I found so much value in that is what I realized is when people could start to connect uh, the other parts, the other benefits that they would get, the ones that they w they wouldn't expect from strength training, did it become easier for them to to make it more of a habit of their life? Because then it wasn't just about the way they looked or just the scale up and down. They were starting to connect what they were doing with so many other aspects of their life. Oh, it's mm -hmm. uh, it's funny because later on, I that was how I really sold the value of resistance training. And the reality is it's all of the... Burning body fat, uh, burning body fat, building muscle, getting stronger, f great. That's excellent. Amazing direct results from resistance training. But believe it or not, they're not, they're almost not as value as the other surprising benefits. And this is what my clients would find, the ones that train me long term. They like that stuff, but all the other benefits that they were getting was what kept them going. Agreed. Mm -hmm. It was the stuff that really dramatically improved its value because the truth is, as you're working out, you know, aside from being obese and all that stuff, like, yeah, you know, if I'm 15 pounds, you know, one way or another, not that big of a deal. I'm in my, you know, if I'm in my 40s or 50s or whatever. But whoa, all these other benefits, 
these are things that I I want. Well, this is also what would encourage th- this type of climbing. I mean, I go, I would get clients that would come in, and their doctor said they have to come in. Oh, right, right. And they were not, they're not motivated to work out. They don't, mm. in fact, they even have, so some, like I have to be here. They have some disdain yeah. right. even for, for exercise people, you know, like, oh, I don't, I'm not that vain. I don't right. care about all those things, mm-hmm. but I'm here because I'm in for, it for my health. Right, exactly. Yeah. Cause I have to be, <laughs> but yeah, then when, when, that, when you help, <laughs> yeah, I know. when you Whatever. help them make that connection and it reminds me of the same thing, the evolution for me as a coach for nutrition too. You know, when you when you speak to just the weight loss, build muscle, the way you look with nutrition, you know, that's that only lasts so long. But when you start to help them make that connection with all the other aspects that mm-hmm. it improves in their life, then people start going like, oh, shit, like, you know, who cares if I'm up or down on the scale so much? I'm noticing it bleed into my work, my my relationships, my everyday activities like, OK, now. And, I, and, the, and the cool thing is we now have science to support a lot of this. So I'm going to, the, the mm-hmm. first one uh, that I'm going to cover was, uh, it blew my mind initially. Um, and, and it didn't, at first it didn't blow my mind because I'd hear it from one person. I hear it from another person. But after you hear it from 15, 20, 30 people, then you start to go, huh, there may be some, uh, some truth to this. Then you look up the science and you find that it is supported. Mm-hmm. This first one in particular was interesting because it countered a common myth and the myth was of, and we've all heard of this, the dumb jock. Yeah. You know, the the, the smart nerd who's got bad fitness, right. you know, weak, frail, but very, very smart. And then the jock who's buffed and fit and mobile who's an idiot. Um, nothing can be further from the truth. One of the number one things I would hear from my clients when I would start training with them with resistance training is that they could think better. Yeah. They're sharper. Their minds are sharper. They had less brain fog. Uh, they felt uh, they had better memory recall, um, better uh, language. I mean, I would train kids, they would notice this. I would train middle-aged people, they would notice this. I would train old people, and they would notice this. And the science supports this uh, quite strongly. Uh, yeah. Exercise, All exercise um, raises a chemical in the brain called BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is like miracle grow for the neurons in the brain. Resistance training does this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, resistance training and exercise has been shown to accelerate learning. Um, they know this now with kids. You know, For a long time there in schools, they started to cut funding from education. The first places they cut it from were like physical education, um, PE and that kind of stuff, structured play, structured exercise. Mm-hmm. And they thought, well, we got to spend more money on math and science or, or save the money for those types of things. Studies are showing now that that was doing the kids a disservice, not just for the physicality Mm -hmm. and the fact that kids are not in good shape, but it actually uh, being physical and and active improved a kid's ability to learn. And this actually has been shown in all uh, all ranges of age. Oh, there's still a lot of work in that direction. That education needs to go into that uh, that understanding that you know moving around definitely promotes this accelerated learning. It it fosters better cognitive uh, abilities and this is all proven now and it's like it's so crazy that used to be a myth is that you know you you would spend your time better reading more uh to to develop your brain whereas like really the combination of the both is even more powerful well do you guys think what do you think it's mostly from do you think it's uh the proprioception side do you think it's more like neurological you think it's more blood oxygen nutrients the usage of glucose Better, All like, of those things. Yeah, so uh, just functions better. So I think we forget that our mind. Um, so our mind, our mind and our brain, we can separate the two, right? The brain is the physical organ that you have in your head. The mind is the 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 concepts and the the consciousness that the brain produces. But we forget that that d- is derived from this physical machine called your brain. If a hel- a healthy brain is going to be able to do that stuff better than a sick brain. So in extreme examples a brain with Alzheimer's or a brain with dementia is just a sick brain, just like a sick heart or a muscle that's weak. And when you keep your body healthy, your brain, the physical brain, is part of your body. So having poor health physically also will affect the structural components and parts Mm -hmm. of the brain. So that's number one. Exercise and resistance training keeps you healthy, balances out your hormones. So that's number one. 
But number two, and this is this is what's specific to resistance training. This is one thing that I love about resistance training more than other forms of general forms of exercise. Because there are other types of activities that are really good at this, but they're not as individualizable as resistance training. Is that proprioceptive learning? So what is proprioception? Um, it's your ability to know where your body is in space. Mm-hmm. So an extreme example would be like an Olympic uh, diver. You watch them spin in the air. It's like how do they know? when to point straight down so that they make the, the smallest splash possible. That's extreme proprioceptive ability. Now, you don't need to go and train that. You can, mm. but, but, but simply lifting weights, and the reason why weights does this better than other forms of exercise is because if you're running or cycling or swimming, you're kind of in the straight line, repetitive motion over and over again. Yeah. Resistance training, I could name a thousand exercises, mm-hmm. and I can name a thousand varieties and versions of each of those exercises. Um, I can name exercises that are better for certain things and others that are better for other things. It's constantly challenging your body with a lunge, a side lunge, an overhead press, a windmill, a row. You are really tr- strengthening that proprioceptive ability of your brain. And they find that when you when you don't do something, okay, just like if you don't use your bicep, the bicep muscle starts to atrophy and it starts okay. to shrink because your body's always getting rid of what it doesn't need. Your body's always trying to be as efficient as possible. Pruning, always. Always pruning. So the parts of your brain that aren't being utilized start to shrink Mm -hmm. and atrophy. They start to become weaker. And resistance training works so well on that proprioceptive ability, which actually affects the entire brain. Yeah, and I think a lot of people don't really consider the nervous system in that entire equation and how many different right. systems work together. So, you know, if you're not doing something, now your your body sort of unlearns that uh, in order to prioritize what you need for the, for the most part. So to be able to keep doing things and functioning your body in a certain way is crucial to then also maintaining those abilities. You, such a great, uh, you brought up such a great point. So if you You'd never, let's say you never squat, never, never, never squat, and then you go and you try to squat. Or let's say you squatted a lot when you were a kid and then you stop for 15 years. You would have a very difficult time squatting. You may even have an inability to squat. Is that inability due to weak muscles necessarily, just doing one squat? Maybe not. It might be just the fact that you just- Unfamiliar. Yeah, you literally forgot that skill. The brain and it pruned it off. It pruned. Said you're not. You haven't been using me for 15 years. This is a use, useless tool for my brain. I'm moving on from it. I'll tell you what. The initial strength gains you get when you first start lifting weights is less from the fact that your muscles are actually bigger and stronger, and more from the fact that your central nervous system, which includes your brain, is operating better. It's building. You build your brain when you build your muscles. Well, a good example yeah. of this, and we we've talked about this on the show before, and uh, you mean. When I think of the most recent experience of this uh, was when we were with Dr. Brink, and we were doing like hip mobility drills with the 9090. And when he, we tried to lift our heel up off the ground in the 9090 position, none of us the first time could even really move it. And then you think, oh, I don't have the flexibility. And he walks over and he picks your leg up and he moves it all the way up. It brings your foot next to your head. <laughs> right. And it's like, no, you have the flexibility there. You've lost that connection, there. right? You've lost you've lost that ability to do it because you stopped rotating the hips that far as you've as you've aged, and so you've just lost that connection. But you can reestablish that. Mm-hmm. They've done studies and shown that uh, when people are or like specialized at a particular thing, the parts of the brain that are associated with that skill tend to be larger and more densely connected. So, like the parts of the brain that let's say uh, are associated with um, let's sight, um, and you were to take a sniper or someone who really, really worked on that ability, you'd find the parts of the brain associated that to be more developed. Now, scientists in the past thought, oh, they were born with these parts of the brain this way, and that's what makes them better at it. Now we know there may be, there's definitely a genetic component, but the other component, which is much larger, is that you're developing yeah. the brain through these skills. And resistance training, it's Far, there's you can get way more complex with it than you can with other forms of exercise. And this is one of the reasons why, besides the fact that you're obviously much healthier, which we talked about earlier, one of the reasons why I would always get clients, and I noticed this most in two categories of clients, the kids that I trained and the older people that I trained. Now, I think the reason for that is that the kids, I would notice because their parents would tell me. 
So I'd start lifting weights with kids. And I'm talking about, when I say kids, I mean like 12, 13, 14. So not super young, uh, just because parents typically don't hire a trainer for kids younger than that. And they'd come and tell me, my son's doing better at math or my daughter's doing better oh, yeah. in school. And I'd talk to the kid about it and I'd say, hey, your mom you know, told me that you're, you're doing better in school. What do you think is going on? They're like, oh, I just feel like I can... I can think better. I feel like I can sit down and focus longer. Yeah. And then my older clients would be like, oh, my memory's better. I'm starting right. to remember things all of a sudden, which is phenomenal. I used phenomenal. to get that all the time, which is great. The productivity, that side of things, like even at the workplace, when, you, when, you're, when you're out there exercising, like how that actually promotes uh, just a, a better functioning brain. Like you think more clearly and then you're, you're able to maintain that focus. Uh, a lot of times, like you get the, the brain fog towards the middle of the day or, you know, like when, when you're at your job and you're just staring at the same thing all the time this kind of promotes this new uh, energy that's usable well you guys are you're going uh you know the the younger route i want to go the other direction with like advanced age which you love to talk about sal and uh, i'm thinking about someone in particular right now my 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 father my stepdad's uh wife is about to get hip surgery and one of the things that i'm stressing to her and she's in her 60s and i what i'm trying to stress to her is that listen when you get done with that hip surgery you're going to feel amazing and if you just keep going about your normal day and you don't do anything, you don't train your hips to continue to move through full range of motion because you now are going to have that ability to take them through, which you can't because of pain right now, what will end up happening is you'll still end up losing that and what you'll end up having to have surgery 10, 15 years again because you'll, the pain will come yeah, you, back. You have, a new, you have a new piece of equipment, but you're not changing the, the computer. You're not changing the, the, the it, hardware or the exactly. software. Exactly. Right. And so it's so important that as soon as you... And so I'm thinking of everyone who might have a family member, a friend who's had recent shoulder surgery or hip surgery, and they did it because they had this unbelievable chronic pain that built up to the point where they eventually had to have this surgery. And then they just feel better because they've had it and they don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. How important is that for this person to be strength training and, and working those muscles through full range of motion to support? You're working you know, your central nervous system. Right. You're working and training your brain. It's actually, that's the more important part. I know, And I know it's not as obvious because when you lift weights and you do it for a long time, the obvious change is your muscles. You can see yeah. muscles and definition and, and, you know, oh, wow, you look good and all that stuff. What you don't see are the changes that happen to the brain. But you are, make no mistake, you are developing your brain more than you are your muscle, even more. The changes that happen in the brain, your ability to move in ways that you couldn't do before has more to do with your, your central nervous system ad adapting, meaning same thing when muscles adapt. There's things that are adding and growing and becoming more efficient. That has more to do with that than it does with the actual muscles themselves getting bigger and stronger. It's a very, very big piece of the pie. Right. And it was always something that surprised me. Now, now I got one more for you. I got another one for you that initially when I would hear this, I'd kind of like, I'd get embarrassed and <laughs> you know, I'd shrug it off like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Um, but I, as I continued training people, I just kept hearing it more and more and more. And then I realized, oh, this is a this is a side effect or a direct effect, I should say, of resistance training. And I remember the first time I heard it. It was the very first time I trained somebody over the age of 65. I was I want to say I was 19 years old, so I was only I'd only been training for about maybe six months or so. Trained an older woman. She was in her late 60s, and we started working out, started doing strength training. And it was maybe I want to say a couple months. Uh, into our relationship as trainer and client. And she brought it up kind of funny. I think she was kind of embarrassed, but you know, we talk a lot about fitness and health. And she was a widow. Her husband had died years before. And she said, you know, Sal, I'm noticing some other effects from uh, working out. And I'm like, oh, like like more energy? Well, yeah, I got more energy, but uh, you know, like a more like more like vigor. And I'm like, oh, like more vigor. Yeah, like you're just wake up more, you know, energetic in the morning. And yeah. it's like, well, kind of. She's like, I'm a little <laughs> bit more, you know, Spunky. like. Spunky. Yeah, she's yeah. like, I'm noticing, <laughs> I'm noticing like. I'm having lots of dreams about yeah. you, yeah. but you're not wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot in certain regions. So I got, so she, she told me her libido. She's like, I, I haven't felt my libido like this in a very long time. Is that a normal response from exercise? And I thought, well, I think it is. Yeah, maybe whatever. I was a little embarrassed. But then I kept hearing it from client after client, male clients, female clients, older clients, clients in the middle age. Resistance training and exercise in general, resistance training specific, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal for libido. It's got to be one of the best things you could do to, if you got to do it right, of course, with the pro appropriate training 
for your 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 sexual vitality. Well, I think this is partially dual prong too. I think there's something that's happening uh, hormonally, uh, physiologically in your body, oh, yeah. and then I also think there's something to the mental and brain talk we just had is also to the 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 confident side of what happens oh, from yeah. that. Like when you get somebody who's because I this was common for me where I'd be training a client. And they would just they would just tell me how much better their relate their sexual relationship is with their partner. Mm -hmm. Just you know we're having so much more sex, and you know they're trying to put it together like you know I feel good, I feel better about myself, but it's just why it's not just. So I think it's a combination of both yeah. feeling better Raising about yourself, certain hormones you right. needed to balancing it out, but also yeah that self confidence of you're improving yourself, and that's something that like exudes now like to your partner, and your partner you know takes takes a, like wind of that, and it becomes a thing. Oh, I mean, just speaking about hormones. Hormones, there's there isn't one single thing aside from taking testosterone or taking a testosterone releasing drug like uh, you know HCG or something like that. There isn't a single thing you can do a man can do that won't have as strong of a direct positive effect on their testosterone like resistance training. By itself, you can compare it against anything else. You can compare it to diet and supplements and all this other stuff. Nothing causes a direct strong effect on testosterone as much as lifting weights. Well, and until you've dealt with lower than normal for you testosterone levels, you don't realize how much how important this is. As for me, like, okay, libido is important and testosterone directly affects that for a male, right? Mm. But it's also all the other things that like just having testosterone, my, my energy levels throughout the day, my mood to get things done, my interactions with people, like all that stuff I feel like is uh, affected from my hormones. And mm -hmm. when, when they're balanced and they're well, it totally affects all those other aspects. Oh, too. I remember when you were going through your process of trying to get your hormone levels back up and I had you taking supplements, uh, you know, herbs that are tested, that have been shown, clinical studies to have a positive effect. Mm. Dietary, you were doing things with red light therapy. And and I remember you 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 went, you, you hadn't worked out for a little while mm -hmm. um, because you weren't feeling good. And I remember you came to work and you're like, dude, I, lift, I did squats yesterday. I did 20 minutes of squats. I felt a bigger boost from that. Than, than, any, than anything else. Than else anything that, else that you were doing. Yeah, it's studies show uh, for men, um, you're going to get like a 15 to 25 percent increase on average in your testosterone levels from lifting weights. That's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a big. That's again, there isn't. And by the way, some supplements when they raise testosterone, if you have low testosterone, it's not a it's not a permanent raise. So you, you let's say you take uh, an herb that sh that has been shown to raise testosterone in low in men with low testosterone, keep taking it. And eventually your body starts to adapt and you stop. And I notice this. You'll notice this if you take some of these things. If you feel it for about 30, 60 days, and then it stops. Resistance training is permanent. It raises testosterone. It stays there as long as you keep lifting weights. And, it, and if anything, it starts to raise it even higher. It also lowers the, the binding hormone that binds to free testosterone, which makes it uh, basically worthless. So in men, you could have free. You have, you have total testosterone, but it's the free testosterone that's active. And what makes something free is it's it's not bound by another hormone or another uh, you know chemical in the body. To start, when you lift weights, you lower that, so you actually free up more testosterone. You also open up more to, uh, androgen receptors in the body. These are the receptors that testosterone attaches to. So there's like three or four different ways that lifting weights makes you makes your testosterone not just go up, but become more free and also become more act more effective. It's like a compounding it, effect. It is. Now in women, lifting weights uh, has other hormonal profound effects. Um, when you work with, like we just had Dr. Becky Campbell on, who's a functional medicine practitioner. When you talk to functional medicine practitioners and you ask them, what form of exercise do you recommend the most to women who are trying to balance their hormones, their progesterone to estrogen balance? Um, the most common answer you're going to get is going to be appropriate resistance training. Appropriate being, the, of course, operative word. For some people, it's going to be lower intense and others higher intensity and all that stuff. But resistance training is just so moldable. And so it's such a pro tissue type of exercise. Mm. Like it's because you're, when you're lifting weights, you're telling the body to build muscle. It's proactive tissue. In order for your body to build muscle, it needs to have balanced, optimal levels of hormones. And nothing does that like resistance training. Now, the side effect of that, you have a, a healthier libido. Libido is a very, very um, good indicator. It's not the only indicator because you want to look at the whole picture. 
But uh, your libido, when you have a sudden drop in libido or you don't have a very strong libido in comparison to before, that's a decent sign that your health isn't isn't doing so well. Your body does not want to procreate. Right. If it's in fact, not it's healthy. probably one of the first things. Would you say a lot of times it right? is mm-hmm. if you if you eat too little or your diet's really bad or you lack lots of sleep or you're stressed. One of the first things to go away when you're stressed is is libido. So it is one of those gauges. And resistance training will boost your libido. And this is based off my own anecdote training clients yeah. more than any other form of exercise. If you want to get horny <laughs> and you want to find a form of exercise that'll help you do that. Lift weights. Right. Nothing does it better. Well, that than also weights. feeds into sort of the next one, right? About like how it affects your moods and how it's like anti depression and, you know, working through and, and working these things out with your body is such a great outlet uh, for you to, to, to deal with like your mood. I feel like that's it, it seems like that's such an obvious one, but like I, I don't think people make the connection enough. Like, mm. yeah. I, if you're a, if you love fitness, right, and you're like a hardcore gym goer, then you've probably made this connection. But I, I'm talking about the average person. Like the average person doesn't normally go into the gym or somebody who's not really excited about working out isn't thinking like, I'm going to do this to make me have a better mood. Most of them are like, Ugh, I need to go do this. But if you were to make that connection and really start to pay attention to how the rest of your day goes when mm. you make those workouts, it's. I think a lot of people connect that to thinking that it's, oh, because I did my workout, therefore I have a better mood because I accomplished my mm-hmm, workout, mm-hmm. but they don't really realize that there's actually something physiologically that's happening to them that's actually improving their well, mood. Well, it's the same thing as paying attention, you know, just like with eating and like how it's affecting you, like like working out and like the different types of workouts. If you do it right, you give the right a dose so you're not going too intense, too overboard, it should really charge you up and, and give you like a great energy boost. Yeah, exercise, uh, this is, in terms of mood, this is the one that actually kept my clients working out for Forever, the longest was this one effect. Just the the, the effect it has on uh, your overall mood. Now, now this is backed um, pretty well by by science. In fact, they're they're considering making exercise a first line treatment for mild to moderate forms of depression. So when you go to your doctor and you're depressed, rather than the first thing that they say is okay, here's an antidepressant, they're 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 going to start saying. We want you to exercise. Why? Because studies are showing that exercise is as effective as a lot of these drugs for for mild to moderate forms of depression, which is the most the most the vast majority of the types of depression that people suffer from. It's it's far more rare to have a crushing type of depression. It's been shown in studies to be as effective in the short term and probably uh, more effective in the long term. So when you compare in the short term. People like, oh wow, I'm, I'm getting great effects. The longer they do it, the the better the effects. Now they're not 100 percent sure why this happens. I mean, we do know that the exercise releases chemicals and endorphins, serotonin, mm-hmm. norepinephrine, uh, you know, dopamine, all the same chemicals that you know antidepressant drugs, right. um, you know, will target. Exercise naturally releases those, not just while you're exercising, but we know now that that your baseline has more of these feel-good chemicals. Mm -hmm. So when you first start working out, you just get a boost while you work out. As you do it on a long-term basis- It raises the capacity for it. It just, you just, your baseline is much higher. And then earlier now, we talked about how it was great for the brain. Uh, Well, neuroscientists noticed uh, a little while ago that the hippocampus of the brain in people who are, tend to have depressed, uh, depression and anxiety, tends to be smaller. So they noticed that people who, who are depressed, they did the brain scans and their hippocampus was smaller. Exercise supports nerve cell growth in the hippocampus and has been shown to cause growth in that same area. Oh, wow. So let's say you're de- in, in, in either the, the shrink, the, the small hippocampus is causing or part of the depression, or it's like this negative feedback loop. You're feeling bad, therefore, this part of the brain starts to shrink because you're doing less stuff or whatever, and vice versa. Doesn't matter. Nonetheless, exercise has been shown to stimulate growth of that region of the brain and others that has been connected to depression. So not only does it just, it literally will start to change again, change your hardware so that you, you're you less prone to depression. It's one of the best things you could do. I feel mm-hmm. like uh, Katrina and I have made this connection so much uh, with exercise that uh, we tend to like pre-apologize to each other when one has like kind of missed their workout. Yeah, like, or yeah, no, it's like, I'm not aware yeah. of how different of a mood I have when I'm on my exercise routine versus totally. when I've missed days. 
And uh, I've known her and I both know to like you pre apologize to a partner say, Hey, just you know, I had planned to do my workout and get it in today. I'm a little frustrated or whatever about that. Just so you know, I'm sorry if I seem irritable or short. Like it's, it's, I've put, I've noticed multiple times uh, in the past where I've caught myself irritable, short, or whatever. And then when I like unpack it after the fact, right, after I've already blown up or after I've already said something I probably shouldn't have said, reflecting on the day, going like, uh, fuck, of course. It's a day that I w- plan to work out. I didn't get my my workout and stuff like that. Oh, completely I, affected my mood. I use So for me, what motivates me now to lift weights consistently is the mood part. Uh, more than the physical part. Way, way more. Mm-hmm. If I know I'm going to have a big podcast or I'm going to be a guest on a on a big show or I have to produce a piece of content that's really important uh, for the business, I will purposely schedule it and structure it so that it happens after, right after a workout. In fact, I have an interview uh, coming up this week, and I told, and it was a bigger one. I told Katrina, make sure you book it on this day or these days at this time, knowing I'd be coming here right after my workout. I'm always my absolute best. Mm-hmm. Um, if I get in an argument or a fight with somebody, um, this is something that I've developed now into a habit, and I started this years ago, is I'll leave the situation and I'll go do my workout, and the, my mm. post-workout mental clarity and ability to process yeah. difficult shit is like. Oh, it's so funny, you guys. Like, I I totally can see that with my irritation levels. Like, I, on the road, like I'm driving home in traffic, and you know, for the most part, pretty chill. If I got my workout in, everything's great. Like all that unused, uh, that energy's been used, you know. Mm. And so I'm pretty much in a calm state at that point versus like just being wound up. It's, you just find you just find yourself like thinking differently. Yes, you're just oh, like that. I'm such a better person <laughs> for working out. Well, I so you know, in, think about your mood for a second. Your mood is literally the filter that uh, you see. You receive information and you put information out. So you have this filter. So imagine red is the color of your filter. Everything you see coming in looks red, and everything you put out to the world looks red. So that's your mood. Exercise changes your filter, both in the short term, like I just talked about, you have your workout and I have this different filter. This is why I can think clear, smarter. I don't react as emotionally or as strong to certain things. I feel more grateful uh, and uh, for, for, for my life and for the, I just, it's a different, better filter. But also uh, articles have talked about how it changes your permanent filter, not just the post-workout or the day after, but your baseline. So your baseline then starts to change a little bit. And now how much do you think your mood will affect your whole life? Right. It affects your whole life tremendously. That's why this one right here is the most important one. This is the one that has gotten all my clients, more than any other thing, more than fat loss, muscle building, anything. It's the change in mood that keeps them doing it. It's the one that keeps me doing it. And it's one I know why I'll keep doing this till till the day I die. And this is also what gives people a little more freedom with choosing their workout, right? Like, you know, our space, sometimes we get in this where we're always who's smarter, whose way is better yeah. this and what's the newest, latest, greatest thing that burns the most. It's like forget all that stuff sometimes. Sometimes just going to the gym to move could, and it doesn't matter how you're moving, just doing that for those reasons. Then what what exactly you're doing in there to maximize bench press or the squat or fat burning like doesn't really become yeah. that important. And that took me even a, a long time for myself to kind of let go of that mm-hmm. because I was so caught up in the results of training and mm-hmm. I was always trying to build muscle and I was so driven by the insecurity versus all the other things that it does for my life. Once I learned to change that thought process of like, sometimes I'm when I go into the gym, I'm even thinking that it's only to change my mood. Yeah. I don't care that yeah. I'm not going to get the most That's gains. That's the most important aspect. Right. right I'm not going to get the yeah. most gains from this workout. Could I do something else yeah. that would be more? Yeah. I don't give a shit. You I'm can gonna refine go. it down the road. I right. mean, you can keep improving uh, the more frequent you're there. It's the consistency mm-hmm. factor. And we always talk to this because of that fact. It's like, we want to get you in there because like you just doing anything at that point is going to elevate you. Now, here's the thing about re- that makes uh, resistance training unique to other forms of exercise in regards to mood. Now, we know, and this is pretty proven, that that being able to be present really is a good thing for us. It's really a good thing to be in the moment, uh, not all the time, but every once in a while, so that you're not thinking about what I got to do tomorrow, what's happening yesterday, oh my God, that embarrassing thing I said, or whatever. Okay. Resistance training, it's harder to be distracted when you're lifting weights than when you're doing other forms of exercise. Oh, yeah. Get on a treadmill and walk. I guarantee within 10 minutes, you're not thinking about walking. You're thinking about all kinds of other stuff in your mind. 
you can do this on a stationary bike. You could do this on lots of different forms of exercise. Resistance training, if you're lifting weights, you're in the weights. You're lifting. Maybe in between sets, you can let your mind wander. But when you're doing a set of squats or deadlifts or curls, it's not the same kind. Can you be distracted while you lift weights? Yes, it's possible. I highly, I, I, You're probably going to hurt yourself if you are, but it's possible. But it's far less likely. You're much more likely to be present because you have to focus on balancing the bar, doing this lift. I'm doing a new exercise. I have to twist. I have to focus on the muscle. It's one of the best present uh, training type of well, that, exercises you could do. And that's what speaks to the brain part we talked yeah. about, right? And that, I think that's where all those benefits come from because – you know, there's other forms of exercise that are great, but it really challenges mm -hmm. the brain yeah, and more part demanding. Of, right, part of that's part of that is being super present. Yeah, and then there's the the productivity aspect of all of this. It kind of combines the mood and the brain part. But I would have a lot of clients that would they would be afraid that taking an hour outside of exercise would be taking an hour away from their important business or whatever. And every single time they come back and tell me. I'm doing more work for sure in yeah. less time. Always. I'm way more productive. Well, of course, you feel good. Yeah. You're thinking sh more sharply. Of course, you're going to be more productive in a shorter period of time. Yeah. Wouldn't we all like you that? You just move faster all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, how many times have you felt that where you haven't got a workout in for a couple of days and then you just feel lethargic and slow and you're tired and everything is like compounding in that way? Where you get your workout in, it's like you're on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And before you know it, you're like, man, I accomplished three, four times what I would have. And I, I dedicated a whole hour of not working on mm -hmm. other things, just working on myself, mm -hmm. working out, and look at the way it impacted every other aspect. Totally. Now, th this next one um, is related to the muscle building aspects of resistance training, but not in the way uh, that you would think. One of the best insurance policies you can have against chronic disease, especially the types of chronic disease that we suffer from in modern society. So like what's killing people in modern societies, right? It's type 2 diabetes, that's a chronic disease. Heart disease, that's a very common one. Uh, Alzheimer's. How about as you get older? Osteoporosis, mm -hmm. you know, that's a very bad one, right? You break a bone, uh oh, now you're really yeah, screwed. More brittle now. Yeah, or, or, or just getting sick when you're older and then going to the hospital, you know, it's like uh, if you're a 30 year old and you have to be hospitalized for your appendix for a few days, not as big of a deal. You're a 60 or 70 year old and you have to do that for three days. Oh my gosh. A lot of times we see people get all kinds of crazy. Well, isn't that, yeah, isn't that, pneumonia and isn't that really common? Like where it's, it's a lot of times somebody passes and when you get into advanced age, they went in for something that is kind of a routinous type of surgery, but because their body can't handle because how weak they and frail they are, they end up dying from that, right? There's a saying that my doctor clients used to tell me, which was, uh, you break a hip and then you die of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Because these people would go yeah, in there- fall and break your hip, die of pneumonia. Yeah, because, right? they're, they're, because they're, they're, they have no muscle. Yeah. They have no strength. Muscle is one of the best insurance policies you can have against all these chronic diseases, starting with, with diabetes. Okay, muscle is a very, uh, you know, glycogen, uh, sugar, insulin sensitive- tissue. If you want to improve your insulin sensitivity, have more muscle. Muscles suck up glycogen. They're able to utilize it through expressing energy and strength. I mean, we know this. Athletes typically will, con they have to consume a certain amount of carbohydrates for maximum performance. Your insulin, your body becomes more sensitive to insulin, so you don't need as much of it to do the well, same and, kind of job. And it also means, too, in layman's term for people, that you get more flexibility in your diet and it doesn't totally. hurt you, right? Somebody who enjoys that glass of wine every once in a while or their favorite piece of pie, the more muscle you have on your body, the less that negatively affects you. Because you could burn it. Right. Because you could burn it. If you have, you know, you have two people and one of them's got, you know, let's say they both weigh the same amount. You got two men, 180 pounds. One guy's 12% body fat at 180 pounds. The other guy's 25% body fat at 180 pounds. There's a large lean body mass difference. They both weigh the same amount. There's also going to be a large calorie burn difference. Right. Even if they had the same level of activity throughout the day, the person with more muscle has just got more calorie burning machinery on their body. Forget the fact that they look a lot better. They're just burning a lot more calories. Now, what does this mean for, for the average person? It means you can eat more and still not eat too much. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, how great is that? Because what you'll find with nutrition is – you know, sugar can be bad. Certain kinds of fats can be bad. Certain kinds of foods can be bad. But context makes a big difference. If your calories are low, they're not nearly as bad. Right. Is if you're like you have a high sugar diet that's also really high in calories, way, way, way terrible for you 
in comparison to a high sugar calorie diet that or a high sugar diet that's low in calories. Still not great, but way not nearly as bad as the high calorie diet. And having a fast metabolism allows you to do this because right. you've got more more muscle. Same thing with heart disease, osteoporosis. This one's an obvious one. Um, as you strengthen bone, uh, excuse me, muscle, you also strengthen bone. Nothing will strengthen your bone more than lifting weights. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And lifting weights is targeted, by the way. So if you're, let's say you'd like to do a lot of walking or cycling, you'll notice a lot of maybe some bone strengthening in the lower lower parts of the body, less so in the hands and, and the wrists you, and the do arm. You, do you attribute most of that to the, the stress that you're putting on the bones because you're carrying weights and you're lifting weights, or is it because of the it promotes oxygen, blood flow, nutrients getting through there? All, well, all of them, but mainly it's the, the you know muscles anchor at, uh, you know, tendons and the tendons anchor at bones. And when they pull harder on the bone or when you load the bone, bone adapts right, to load. Right, you stress it. You stress yeah. it so it adapts. It gets used to that. Oh, you, you, an extreme example. Yeah, it's sensitive to the force demand that you place on it. Oh, if, you break, if you're healthy and you break a bone and it heals, it's stronger at the break than it was initially. Mm -hmm. The way the body adapts is it gets stronger. Martial artists used to practice, like old school karate practitioners would practice punching hard objects. And what would happen is they'd create these micro fractures in the bone and the bones would heal stronger and they keep doing it over and over. And they'd get these incredibly dense, like if you look at bone under, have you guys seen the pictures of like an osteoporosis bone versus a normal bone? No. It, on the outside, they look the same. It's when you look inside and you know the spaces in between the bone, it looks like yeah. bubbles or whatever. There, there's there's more of them. There's more space. It's, it's like not as- spongy mesh. In yes. There. It's yeah. not as dense. When you do resistance training and strength training, it's not like your bones necessarily grow. You're not going to get a wider, right. you know, femur necessarily. They adapt to become more solid because they're getting stressed yeah. all the time. On the inside, they yeah. get more, much more dense, so you're far less likely to break to break that bone. And this is because you're strengthening the tendons and the muscles around it. Resistance training just it's. I had a client once who actually they did a case study on her. She had uh, bone loss, osteopenia, which is uh, kind of like when you're on your way to osteoporosis. And they couldn't figure out that, you know, she would do the calcium. She was walking. She wasn't overweight. They were trying to figure out what can we do to, to help strengthen her bone. Doctor recommended, let's go have you lift some weights and see what happens. So she started lifting weights with me uh, twice a week. That was it. Two days a week, we were lifting weights. And the not only did we reverse the osteopenia, but it was at such a, a pace that the doctor got on the phone with the doctor several times and they made her a case study. So they could use it to present to other doctors and say, hey, wow. if you have aging clients with osteoporosis, the form of exercise you need to, re you, the, the one thing you need to recommend to all of them is lifting weights. Have them lift weights because uh, what we're seeing here is pretty crazy. So right. definitely your, your resilience and your ability to fight illness from resistance training. Like if you, here's another example. Let's say you get really sick, you get the flu. Flu is nasty, and it can knock people down for a week or two. Let's say you get it, and you get pneumonia, and you're in the hospital, and they're, you know they're, you're you're in there for five days. If you've got a lot of muscle on your body, you're going to come out of you're still not going to feel very good when you come out of there. But right. you've got more insurance. Mm -hmm. You're going to come out, and you're not going to be nearly as frail and as weak as if you went in there without a lot of muscle on your body. Well, another example is that is when you uh, tear like ligaments and stuff because your your muscles too are supporting all that. So I remember like when I uh, tore my ACL, MCL and the doctor was so impressed with the, my ability still to walk and it was he attributes that to all the muscle mass that was supporting the knee. He said, man, if you were, if you were a, another client who had very little you know, muscle, muscle in both your, your calves and your, and your quads, you would never be able to mm -hmm. support yourself the way you are right now, which is, I mean, think of it like that too, for injuries as you start to age. Totally. Totally. Um, the last one that I can think about, um, which for me, I always thought was really, really cool, um, was how empowering, um, being stronger is. Now there's the obvious, uh, like the, the person who, who gains, or regains independence. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, I, I wasn't able to carry my groceries in the house all the way up the stairs, or I wasn't able to, you know, sit down and get up or whatever. So now I'm stronger. I can do those things. That's pretty obvious. But there's one that's a little less obvious. And I noticed this more with women. Yeah. And it was like, I feel strong now. And that strength makes you feel confident. Like mm -hmm. just lifting my luggage in the overhead compartment or just feeling confident walking around with good posture, feeling strong enough to... To, if I need to, to get away or to defend myself, 
That was a huge one, and I would hear that all the time from my female clients. Yeah, I noticed that a lot uh, with my female clients, and I, I think it's it's mainly because uh, I mean it wasn't promoted enough that you know women like are very much just as capable of lifting heavy weights just like guys. It's like this 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 thought that it's going to make you bulky and like you're training to be like a football player and all this kind of stuff was perpetuated out there, and so it was all about like as many reps as possible and shaping and sculpting their bodies, uh, you know, through just like multiple reps, but you know, once you get them to, to 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 lift heavy weights, really focus it on that like completely, it was just like a transformation right away. I also think that strength training gives you the formula for life, mm. Mm. right? When when you when you learn when you when you learn to strength train and you and you lift weights properly with the intent to build muscle, burn body fat, what what you end up piecing together is the formula that applies to almost everything else in your life. Mm. That it takes hard work. There's going to be setbacks along the way. You get back up. Consistency is one of the number one most important things. Like you start to real when you and when you've accomplished something through weight training, and you and you and you know what it takes to do that to really move the needle and be consistent and see a difference in your physique and all the things that we're talking about, even the things that you're not uh, used to. When you start to connect that, you start to learn that oh wow, this is crazy how this this same formula applies to other aspects of my life and almost just, everything right because it, it, it involves you it's it's self-improvement it's it's how you can uh you, you know better yourself and of course that's going to translate into any direction you want to go so oh, that's where i think that's one of the most empowering pieces of oh that. yeah i mean you go to the gym and you did five push-ups this week and then you're able to do six ones the next and you're working hard and you're consistent and then next thing you know you could do 20 push-ups like you can't tell me that that lesson, that confidence that you build, isn't going to bleed over into the rest of your life. Well, you can literally train yourself, and to to a more extreme example of, of to do something you never could do before, right? Hey, I, when I first got into lifting weights, um, I couldn't even put forty five pounds on each side of the bench press right. for years. But then I look back now. And moving 225 is relatively easy for me. And to think that, whoa, if I could think back to that mindset that I had then of like, that seems so far away. That didn't even seem possible. It was just reps. But I did something that I would have guessed is impossible for me to do. Holy shit, where else can I apply and, yeah, this It gives same? you that thought because I remember we're talking about this even with podcasting or anything else you're doing that's completely new. Like We were like, dude, this is like just like fitness. This is reps. Yes. We will get better <laughs> yes. the right. more we just sit and work on it. The right. more we practice. The more practice. Like every and it's it it is just a, a time tested fact mm -hmm. if you have that mentality going into something. And it's slow, so it forces yeah. you to learn that lesson. Oh, right? totally. There is no there is no shortcut. There yeah, is you're no, not gonna lift weights and then tomorrow wake up and it's all you're right. all you're expert at it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's why that it's so important, right? You can't you can, and even cheating, right? Someone will be like, oh steroids and that even still that, takes you a long time. Still takes yeah. and that's why it's it, it's still that fucking yeah. hard. You learn if you learn to take that applied to everything else. Done, yeah, I had, you know, I I used to hear this more from female clients, but now you're starting to hear it also from men. And that's the, like, how many times did you train a client? Usually this was a female client that was afraid of a, of weight. They were afraid of a weight they, because they never, they didn't know how to exert themselves in that way. They didn't know how to lift something really heavy with confidence. They didn't know how to get under a bar that felt heavy and and it's like they didn't even know their capability. Right. They would get on the and oh my god, that's too heavy. And I'm and I'm tell I would tell them, look, I'm watching your form. You could actually lift another thirty pounds. Right. I know this for a fact. I've been doing this for oh, years. It's also one of the most rewarding things as a trainer to give to a client. Right. How, how many times have you guys had that where a client is like, I can't believe I did this. Right. And, yeah. I mean that is so empowering. Untapped potential. So empowering that you you're able to Total, gift that. But to even this. just the ability to grind through and struggle because when you lift a heavy yeah. weight. You know, when you pick it up, I mean, look, uh, you know, let's say my max deadlift is is 500 pounds. 400 pounds still feels really heavy. It's not mm -hmm. like it's 100 pounds less, but it's not like I get under under 400 pounds or you know, I lift 400 pounds off the ground and it feels like a piece of cake. It feels really heavy. But because I've trained myself and understand how to really drive and struggle, I can tell that I can lift another 100 pounds. Now, a lot of people never train this. Now, in the past... I would hear this more from female clients, but nowadays I'm starting to hear from guys too, mainly because we're just far less physical. We've never exerted ourselves that way. Mm -hmm. And that's a skill. It's actually a skill. When you learn how to get under a bar and you get under a squat bar or whatever, and you drive up and you lift it and you feel it, all of a sudden other challenges don't feel nearly as challenging. You walk out of the gym lifting a weight that you're like, 
the way that felt, I don't think I could do this. Is one of the reasons this is one of the inspiring things about personal trainers because I'm sitting over here going, No, you can lift it. I'm watching your form. Yeah, yeah. you can lift it. Let's try it again. Let's try it. And then they do, and they're like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And then everything else seems a little bit easier. That's so, it's such an empowering feeling. And resistance training in particular, especially because of the challenge aspect of it, the fact that there's so much. Uh, potential variety with what you're doing. You can get really good at one exercise and I could throw one at you that you've never done before and all of a sudden it's super challenging all over again. Boy, what a great feeling going through that process. I, I And I really believe to kind of bring this all together to the coaches that are listening, like this is what takes you to the next level as a coach is when you learn to speak to these types of points to your, your everyday clients. Absolutely. Like when you can make this connect, you got to remember that 90% of the people that you train and you coach are not like you. They don't love they didn't get up loving to go to the gym and they found they love it so much they've made a career out of it. They're not like you. Most people do it because of the the th the few things that they know that are important about it and that's enough to get them in the gym to start exercising. When you help them make the connection to these other things, that really start to impact their life that has nothing to do with the obvious ones of what probably drove them in the gym, which is scale on the weight, body fat percentage, muscle building. Once you learn to make that switch over to this side, like that's where you get life or clients. That's where you change people's yeah, lives. It really cements it for them. Sometimes. Absolutely. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our free guides and resources. If yeah, you're a trainer, actually, we have a free personal training guide there as well, but we have guides on squatting, guides on building your arms, working on your midsection. Fat loss, muscle building. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam.